Welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in today's show, with the New Year holiday here and that blast of Arctic air, our risk of fire intensifies. We'll show you how to better protect your home as we go into a burning building with some of the best firefighters anywhere. Life-saving information you must know when you have only minutes to react. Let's do that again. Then Dr. Nick with expert advice on wrapping up 2017 and starting 2018 on the right note. I think it might be also kind of important for us to help the viewers think about reflecting over the past year hmm. before we go full force into all these goals that I rarely meet. <laughs> think about what the year was like in the past, how we grew, how we, how we uh, maybe any behaviors we change. But first, some ring in the new year with fireworks, others getting cozy around the fireplace. But we'll all be turning up the heat to stay warm with the recent drop in temperatures. So if your house catches fire, do you know what to do? Because you have only three minutes to react. I go inside a burning building to show you how. This is the St. George Fire Department's newest training center. Here, firefighters prepare for this. They're preparing Kim and me to go inside a burning building to show you firsthand what you're facing. When you get ready to come out, you turn right hand on the wall. They cover everything from driving a simulated fire engine. Yeah, I'm getting a little dizzy. We have the lights on. Okay, good. Okay, I'm thinking I see some smoke over there. See? Every time you stop, I bet that's real, isn't it? Now, if you rode in a real truck, you would find that it's very similar to the sounds and the feel. And... Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel that stopping sensation is the same. It... Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, I'm it. it really won't let me run off the road, will it? Yes, it will. Yeah, it will. Oh, it will? It will so you can crash it. Thanks. Everybody that drives has okay. to go through this. To suiting up. It's a lot of gear. Then going in. You ready? You ready? Fires burn faster and hotter than ever because of more synthetic materials in our homes and open floor plans. Experts say you have only three minutes to make it out alive. Temperatures can reach 1200 degrees in minutes. So gearing up fast and correctly for firefighters is critical. They have 90 seconds to get on all their gear. And what he's doing right now is putting on all that equipment as fast as he can and as safe as he can. And then he'll have, once he's done with that, he'll have another minute to put on his breathing apparatus so he can breathe in a smoky environment. State Fire Marshal Butch Browning says, I'd never make it. You realize that you can be fired by now if, you had to get, if other people had to dress you in the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're right. <laughs> I feel like an anteater. It looks funny, but that mask is the only way to breathe once we're inside the burning building. The fire sucks up all the oxygen and leaves behind deadly black smoke and poisonous gases. 
when they go into this burning building, it's not just about saving a life. It's not just about saving property, but do you realize they could lose their own life in here? St. George Chief of Training Timmy Walters has had several close calls. The worst was uh, running out of air. When I got to a victim, I ran out of air. And, you know, just that feeling of you, your little pressure alarms going off, you have a victim, you got to get out of the room. The air pack is the heaviest part. I think I just doubled my body weight. This once all the firefighting gear is on, it weighs 50 pounds. There are layers upon layers. Long time said I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, after nearly 45 minutes of gearing up, we're almost ready. Ready to go. Ready to row. Okay, this thing's nothing. <clears throat> That's so they can keep you on a leash. I told them, I said, if you're going to bring Whitney in a burning building, keep her on a short leash. That's your leash. <laughs> There's my leash. Get me up. <laughs> All right, so, are we ready? ready? Just walking in all this is difficult. We fight what others fear. I love that saying. Everything is twice as difficult once the air pack goes on. Oh, I have a whole new appreciation when I see y'all coming down the road. Just getting in the fire truck is a struggle. I feel pretty uncoordinated. Thankfully, our lives are in the hands of these professionals because Kim can hardly get out of the truck. You okay? Oh, I know it. The fire hoses are flung. Oh, sorry. Forty yards in, we're close to the fire. For the first time, I'm scared. I can't see anything. It's not foggy like in the movies. In real life, you cannot see through the smoke. Okay, get down, get down, get down, get down. Put your hand on the wall. It sounds simple, but finding the wall isn't. Everything is confusing and scary. Come on this way, witness. Yeah, come on, keep coming, keep coming. We're searching for a victim. Grab the hose, witness. We're gonna push some of the smoke out okay. of the room, which is hose. The water is gonna push the smoke out. The force of the fire hose is strong, but finally, the smoke is clearing enough to see a bit. And we put out the fire. Okay, we're going to back out. We're going to go back out. For the first time in my life, I realized anyone could fall victim to the fire and flames in mere minutes. <laughs> Doesn't matter how smart you are, how tough you are, how good you are under pressure, getting out alive is close to impossible without a home fire escape plan and practicing it often. Six long minutes after going in, thankfully, we're out. You get in there and you and it's frightening because you really don't know where you are and you really right. don't know what or anything exactly is. Right. Looking for victims. It's, it's, it's all over about touch, you know. You know, it, it, we were just talking about this a while ago. It's still the most dangerous job and there's no technology that can change that fact of going into the smoke filled building. I mean, you know, you the way you put all this on and you seal that mask, you know, if you don't do that right, you yeah. can die. After the fire is out and embers cooled, in come Monty and his handler, fire investigator Brian Mushan. Their job is to find out how it started. What they call he's a tool, just like any tool shed. But what he does is he helps our investigators instead of spending many hours on a fire scene. They, he can he can help them cut that down by by minutes or even sometimes hours. Monty's specialty is detecting chemical accelerants. If someone uses an accelerant to uh, to start a fire or to uh, help a fire get bigger real fast, then what he does is he picks up on that petroleum distillate. It can be uh, any petroleum distillate like gas, 
uh, diesel, uh, kerosene, uh, paint thinners, um, charcoal lighter fluids, mm -hmm. things of that sort. To show us, Brian poured a few drops of an accelerant in two spots of this room. He brings in Monty to sniff it out. See? And in seconds, he has What one. he did is he alerted. So when he, when he finds an accelerant, what he does is his alert is he sits. Then Monty finds the second spot. What, Monty? What you got? Good boy. Good boy. Monty is a rare treasure. 52 dogs. Oh, really? that's it? Across the U.S.? Yeah, across the U.S. There's 52, and Monty is the only one in the state of Louisiana. Monty was trained by the ATF in Virginia for nine weeks. Six weeks after that, Monty and Brian trained together. They worked together three years. They lived together 24-7. It's amazing to see the difference between his... Uh, work life and when he gets to be in his personal life. He knows the difference. For firefighters, their work life often blends into their personal life too. They work 24 hour shifts together. Josh Jenkins, captain of Engine 613, says they've got each other's backs. Uh, we got a tight knit family at our station for sure. I started volunteering at another department at a very young age and decided I loved it. So I decided to make that my career. Any family? but recruiting others to make it their career is more and more difficult. In his 28 years as St. George Fire Chief, Jerry Tarleton has seen the shift. I think the mindset of the workforce today is a little bit different than when I came to work. I'm 63 years old, so I came to work a long time ago. Um, we're dealing with people that are savvy in terms of technology. I mean, they use these a lot, you know, it's, it's, um, in my day, I guess, as we were growing up, you had a lot of outside, outside activities. There wasn't TV to really watch. If it was, it was one or two channels. So we were forced to go outside and sweat and play and field uh, baseball teams from the neighborhood or football teams, whatever. Today, it's all done in front of a computer and the mindset's a little different. You know? Even though Chief Tarleton has one of the top fire departments in the state, and a new three and a half million dollar building and training center, along with competitive salaries, hiring firefighters is still tough. It's difficult. It's, I think it takes a unique person that wants to do this. Every day, firefighters put their lives on the line to save hours, but we have to do our part too. And, and the best thing I can say is for, for the public, yeah. is to just practice at night. Set your alarm for three o'clock in the morning uh -huh. and when the alarm goes off, try to get out. Wow, okay. You know, and, and that's the best thing you can do because if your house is full of smoke, you know, it makes it that much harder. So if you kind of know, you practice getting out and staying out, you're, you're, you're gonna be better off. You know, and your chances of making it out alive will be fueled by knowledge, not fueled by flames of fear. For more life-saving tips, a valuable resource is the website of the Louisiana Fire Marshal's Office. And still ahead, Dr. Nick, how to be out with the old and in with the new the best way possible as Weekends with Whitney continues. Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. It is New Year's Eve, and if you're anything like me, you are thinking, hmm, what are my New Year's resolutions going to be? Gee, there, I could have a list like, as long as my Christmas list. But where do I start 
or even should I do it? Dr. Nick joins us with more. Great to see you. Good morning and Happy New Year to you. Happy it's, New uh, Year. Water around the corner. Do I stress tonight. myself out and figure out what my New Year's resolutions are going to be? Well, it certainly is always appropriate to think about uh, how I might look at this year differently and plan out differently. I, I think it might be also kind of important for us to help the viewers think about reflecting over the past year hmm. before we go full force into all these goals that I rarely meet. <laughs> think about what the year was like in the past, how we grew, how we, how we uh, maybe any behaviors we changed. For me, Whitney, I, uh, this year, for some reason, flew by like very few have before. I, I had the same sentiment. It, it just is, it's like, wow. And so what that makes me do when I think about it, mm -hmm. it really does make me think when I reflect back, every day has got to have some significance to it, some, some joy, some awe, some, some learning, mm -hmm. some feedback, some, oh, some noticing of, of life because it moves so fast. Do you feel like with, uh, with its rapid pace that you were in the moments, that you in really felt everything this year? It, 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 reflecting back on the year, I would say that I was probably more in the moment than I have been. Wow. And Good. when I say in the moment, I'm talking about, again, just the experiences of meeting people or getting off the elevator or walking or how beautiful the weather is or how ugly it is or, oh, I don't want to get up today. It, it, but but being in it, okay, good. Engaged. Being in it, engaged in it, connected with it, and then and then kind of letting it go. Uh, Speaking of letting go, been, oh. well, I was just going to say you almost lost something. Very well, yeah. I treasured. mean, just what a, a month ago. I mean, I, the lens in the right eye slid to the back from a cataract surgery years ago, and and so this I can't see out of at all. Oh. This is kind of toast. Two twenty two hundred. What the, but, but when this, this left at like two o'clock one afternoon, I was in the office getting ready to see a patient, and I just couldn't see. But it was uh. it was amazing. I didn't I didn't panic. I didn't go crazy. I just walked down the office and was kind of making my way to the hall to the administrative assistant at the desk, and I said, I, I can't see. Can you get me an Uber or can you take me to the doctor? And it was extremely humbling. When I got there, I did break down. But we, we got it fixed, somewhat fixed. I mean, I'm wearing contact lens now. That gives me pretty good vision. And then, you know, I wear glasses, which I don't have to wear right now. But I mean, I wear them for distance and for reading. Okay. And so it, it this is. But, but they talked about high. surgery. They talk, and there still might have to be surgery. And, and you I could lose could the vision lose, in that one. I still could lose the vision in the eye. So what I had to keep telling myself to make through was, you know, I can't see well, uh -huh. but I really look good. <laughs> and so it. that helped me. <laughs> <laughs> that helped me get through it because humor is a very, humor and humility are two words that go really well together. Mm. And, you know, I, I think walking into the year, it really would be good to think back at all the horror. What about all we think that was so horrible about the Some of us are standing better than ever. Mm. You're right. Doing better than ever. Uh, some of us are still grieving the loss of someone this year, you know, a spouse. Of course. But we're seeing that we've got the resources to get through it. Mm. And the kindness it, and love of others who help pull us through and that. The, and the kindness and love of others. It's just, I just think reflecting, it's just something I don't think we do enough of in our society. We don't reflect back. I know you're supposed to live in the moment, but I'm telling you, without mm. history, there can be no moment or anticipation for the future. There can't. The three have to go hand in hand. I can't be thinking about tomorrow without, mm -hmm. without some history. Sure. Don't you, think well, you don't you think it was a year of something? I mean, Reed's gone to college. Oh, I know. That was a transition. Mm -hmm. And y'all handled it. Yes. Very well, in fact. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, me better than my husband. <laughs> He's still grieving. <laughs> yeah, well, he went so far away. I know. He I know. So far away. Yes. And, uh, and I went away to school out of state, and my husband didn't. So I think it's just I know what my son's experiencing and the, and the joy and the treasures and the things who 
the ways he's having to grow. So for me, that's so exciting. Yeah. And and for my husband, he just you know misses yeah. him it was, terribly. Yeah, he does yeah. terribly. But you know, but but hey, he made it through. You know what I mean? Sure like he, he survived did. it. Sure he did. But, and, and he sees that Reed's doing well too mm -hmm. and enjoying it. Yeah, we'll see how those grades come back. Yeah, no. well. <laughs> Jeez, and I think they're good. Yeah, <laughs> we hope true, they're though. good. But you, when you said something about doing more reflecting, I think, in my case, certainly more, more reflecting on um, what was great, uh, lessons learned, what wasn't so great, where I grew, where I didn't grow, will help me decide and I'll call it a list, but what to put on my New Year's resolution list this year. What based on what to do going forward on, on all that reflection. Well it's gonna be I mean no? it's gonna have no, it's gonna have to be customized, you know, to whatever is going on with any particular person's life. I mean if there's been a major change of job or, or you know, problem with the marriage. You know, if, if I could give one ounce of general, general advice sure. to you and to anyone, it would be make a resolution to think things through before we act. Ah, oh, that's a great one. I am constantly still, when I get angry or upset or get my feelings hurt, I want to react. Mm -hmm. I want to get defensive. I want to put up the wall, I want to attack, I want to text, and that's when I pull back and say, think it through. Mm. And when I think it through, I always have a good answer. That's how I'll deal with that. That's nice. That's how I'll deal with that. It, it's when, easy to it, have those emotions, even on Facebook. <laughs> And so, and you know, I'm not on Facebook as much because well, in the in the way we just it. relate to people, especially couples after 15, 20 years, we just we just kind of know each other's buttons and triggers, mm -hmm. and and we react. I mean, you know, like when when we were having the dinner and Robert, you know, was talking about eating something else, <laughs> and did you didn't re but you didn't react. You didn't go screaming about I did all this for you. That's that's what I'm talking about. What what good is it? Thank you. Yeah. What good is it? Right. You know. Or, and at the end of the day, is it the he didn't need it? So I'll yeah. We'll have and, leftovers. And, and and maybe and maybe just to add to that, being reactionary, know what your triggers really are. Okay. My, I I I know that deep down I have a need to be approved of. It's a struggle. It's always been a struggle. So all somebody's got to do is say, "I didn't get anything out of this session. That I, I just want to go, oh. be, either beat myself up or beat the person up." <laughs> Instead of sitting back and thinking, "Okay, let me think about that," uh -huh. and then let me respond to it. And a lot of times, it's really not about me. They didn't hear what they wanted to hear. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I love that we say yeah. that oftentimes. So many, it's, it's really not about us. So yeah. that's another great one going in. Don't think it's always about you. Yes. There are yes. external factors in everyone's not, life. If it's not always, then again, we don't have to have this reaction. Yeah. It's like, and then we can put the attention to the other person. Are you okay? Well, what was it that you needed yeah. that you didn't get? Mm -hmm. it, it's, nice. it's, it's, it's really caring enough to not get so darn defensive. And even even when bad, bad things happen, I mean, some people are gonna probably lose a job, okay. you know, and it's like, okay, what might be out there waiting for me? Mm -hmm. Or this might be an opportunity for something else. Just not get so clouded in, oh my God, it could, would, should, if, what, if it, it's, it doesn't work. Yeah. Doesn't work. Less anxiety, more peace in the valley. More peace in the valley, more serenity, more acceptance of the way things are. Um, but that doesn't mean not to set goals. Of course, of course. Doesn't mean not to set goals, but just make them reachable. Maybe not a hundred of them either. No, maybe not a hundred of them. I'm just happy that I'm finally at the point in my life where the top one isn't always lose 10 pounds. <laughs> I think about my 20s and 30s, like that was always at the top of the list. Isn't that stupid, shallow, really? You know, nothing wrong with getting healthier or moving more, but uh, that, that was always a goal. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and I would gain that and lose wonderful? those same 10 pounds like, you know, 20 times that year. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. healthy was that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And miss all that good food that you could have had and then, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, wasted energy. Wasted energy. Hey, happy new year. And the same to you. You're gonna lose 20 pounds? Heck no. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you're not gonna find. <laughs> you're not gonna Thank find. you. And remember the key, you may not see well, but you look, look good. good. <laughs> and look, you can't see me well as well as you used right, to. Be. I can't. But I look good. good you look good. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> More weekends with Whitney uh, after this. <laughs> Discover your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors. With 10,000 square feet of inspired interiors, it's easy to bring beauty home. Create a unique interior that reflects your exterior. Translate what you love into where you live. For 60 years, Dixon Smith has refined the art of style, space, and comfort. You're a work of art. Your home should be too. Embrace your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors in the heart of Baton Rouge. Discover Dixon. Go Roof is proud to serve the Baton Rouge and surrounding areas with our years of experience and quality service. We want more than just your roofing needs. Go Roof cares about the client and wants you to be our customer for life. Roof replacement, repair, vents, and more. Go Roof will get it done. We have excellent standing relationships with all the top insurance companies, so making your claim is fast and easy. A beautiful roof every single time at Go Roof. Call now for a free estimate. Thanks for sharing your time with us this week and throughout 2017. I wish you a happy new year. In fact, we hope to see you back here next week when it will be the new year. But until then, we leave you with this.